What's up YouTube? I hope each and every one of you guys are healthy and enjoying your lives to the fullest today. Today it is an absolutely beautiful day. There is just a tad bit of wind, but regardless we are reviewing the 2023 Lincoln Navigator Reserve. Huge thank you to Jennifer G over at Ted Britt Lincoln of Chantilly, Virginia for allowing me to do this review for you guys today. If you guys are interested in this particular Navigator or any Lincoln product, I'll be sure to have Jennifer's information on screen as well as in the description box down below. But with that said, let's get into the video all right first we're going to talk about the exterior and performance but the first thing i wanted to say is that i do apologize if there is any wind noise in this video i do have a wind sock on my camera but that is not 100 percent, so there may be a little bit of wind noise something that i cannot control but i am trying my best so just keep that in mind as we go throughout this video but like i said first we're going to talk about the exterior and the performance so this is the 2023 Lincoln Navigator Reserve, and this particular one has been painted in the $750 ceramic pearl metallic paint, which in direct sunlight looks very, very nice. It's got a very nice metallic flake to it. But a couple things I wanted to mention um, is that for 2023, the Navigator did receive very minor changes, and one of those minor changes is that for 2023, the ELSD is now included with the heavy-duty trailer tow package, which applies to this particular Navigator because it does have that package. But let's move into our headlights. So. The Navigator Reserve does get adaptive pixel projector headlights with automatic high beams. You also do get LED daytime running lights, LED turn signals, and LED fog lights towards the bottom of your front bumper. Taking a step to the left, let's take a look at the front end. Man, I think this thing looks super, super good. I know looks are subjective, but I really like the design language on the new Navigator, which did receive a refresh in 2022. But at the center of your front end, you guys do get a satin chrome front grille with your Lincoln logo located at the center of it. Just something I thought was kind of interesting is that the grill mesh is kind of the Lincoln logo itself. I think that's really cool. But then you guys also do get a bright chrome grill surround. One thing I wanted to mention is that this particular one does have the $6,310 Reserve One package, which gives you guys the illuminated Lincoln logo, which looks absolutely sick at night. And then at the bottom of your Lincoln logo is where you will find your forward-facing camera. That forward-facing camera works with your 360-degree view camera system that comes standard on on the reserve I'll take a step back and let's take a look at our lower grill so you guys do get a black lower grill and then you guys do get some black trim and venting above your LED fog lights so you guys got some black trim here and then you get some venting I'm not sure if the camera will pick it up but you guys can see light through uh, basically that is for better aerodynamics which you know hopefully in turn leads to better fuel economy but really who knows besides like the engineers that designed this and then you guys also do get a gray trim piece that connects your fog lights together all the way at the bottom of your front bumper and ends about right there then you guys do also get a gloss black lower fascia and you may be able to see it it's about like right here and runs all the way across and then you also do get six forward facing sensors on the front end of the navigator one thing I wanted to mention is that Lincoln considers these sensors here on the side side sensors. So basically you have four forward facing sensors and then two side sensors because you also have one of those in the rear as well. Now working our way to the side of the Navigator. This is an option, um, but before I get into the wheel, I did skim over the ground clearance. You guys do get 9.6 inches of ground clearance with the Navigator Reserve. But back into our wheel and tire setup. This particular Navigator does have the $995.22 inch 12 spoke machine face wheels with black pockets. These wheels are wrapped in 285-45 Pirelli Scorpion Verde all season tires. I'll give you guys a view of the tread pattern on those tires as best as I can. I know like the light is kind of messing uh, with the uh, view of the tread pattern, but also with the Navigator Reserve, which I think is really cool. You guys do get an adaptive suspension with road preview. So basically the Navigator will read the road. It'll see a pothole and then it will loosen up the suspension so it soaks up those bumps better. I think that is really, really cool. It definitely equates to a very nice ride on the road. 
one thing that I thought was pretty cool is that right there it says the Lincoln Motor Company. Just little touches like that that I personally appreciate. You guys also do get rain sensing wipers as well as your navigator fender slash door badging. So it starts in your fender and then leads into your door. Then working our way up just a tad, you guys do get black mirror caps with integrated LED turn signals. These side view mirrors are heated power folding the driver side mirror is auto dimming you get your blind spot monitoring on the upper left hand side of your driver side mirror and then over there on the upper right hand side of your passenger side mirror and then at the bottom of your side view mirrors not only do you get a camera that works with your 360 degree view camera system but you also do get a puddle light so basically um, it will illuminate this area at night which is a very very nice feature now let's do a little side profile action of the navigator because you know, it looks very similar to an Expedition, but I do like the way that the lights look a lot better here on the Navigator rather than on the Expedition. Again, that's just personal preference. One thing I wanted to point out is that you guys have your body color shark fin antenna located at the center of the roof line on the front end. And then you guys do get chrome roof rails also with the Navigator Reserve. You get chrome window trim, and then you get body color door handles with a chrome accent and keyless access. All you gotta do, put your hand behind the door handle, the vehicle will unlock. Run your finger across these four hash marks right here. That will lock the vehicle. You also get a keypad right here. All you gotta do is memorize your key code, and that will also let you into the vehicle as well working our way down just a tad you guys do get a bright belt moldings as Lincoln calls it it's basically chrome trim on your passenger doors and then also on your rear bumper located about back there and then last but not least on the side you guys do get these black illuminated power running boards so obviously when you open up the door those running boards will deploy just to make it a little bit easier to step in and out of the navigator because the reality is this thing is just about as high off the ground as like a Ford F-150 or you know a 1500 series truck like that but working our way back you guys do get a capless filler neck boom I don't think there are any fuel requirements because it doesn't say it on there um, so I do believe 87 octane will do you just fine at the top of the roof line at the back end you guys do get a body color roof spoiler with your integrated LED third brake light located about right here I know the GoPro is not going to pick it up all that well but that is your third brake light this is your rear wiper one thing that's pretty cool about the navigator as well as the expedition and the tahoes and stuff like that is that this upper glass piece up top here will open up so let's say you go to home depot or something like that you get a long two by four that will not fit with the trunk closed you can just open up this rear glass and then send that two by four out the back then you get some chrome trim just beneath that chrome lincoln lettering you have your led taillights one thing that i really like about lincoln's is that this is an led taillight strip it looks really sweet i'm not sure if i turn this on if that will turn on but you can see see how it like starts at the middle and then works its way out i think that is really really cool and then you get another chrome trim piece about right here below that you have your rear camera your rear camera also does have a washer so let's say you know you're driving down the road it's like a salty road because you know it just snowed or something like that you get a low pressure zone at the back of the vehicle which basically like puts all like the debris on the back end but you do get a rear uh, camera washer which is very very nice to basically wash off that camera so you can see what you are backing into um, let me find the pad to open up the lift gate I believe that's for the upper glass oh I guess not it is for the entire lift gate so obviously you do get a power lift gate but taking a look at the rear end you get a LED light right there. Folding this down, you get a spot you can set your grocery bags. Same thing on this side as well. You get a little storage cubby down in there. It's actually quite a bit of storage space in that little storage cubby. Now there is an option back here. These carpeted floor mats do come standard. However, this one has been optioned with the $200 all weather floor mats, which are located just beneath them uh, in this thing. Basically all weather mats. What I mean by that is that they are rubberized floor mats. One thing that's really nice is that you do get a power folding up and down third row seat and you can fold the seats down individually by the push of a button. Now the seat's gonna go down. I can press that button again and the seat will fold back up. However, your second row seats, you can only fold down from back here. They do not fold back up. So just keep that in mind. And then if I opened this up, I apologize if there is any wind noise right now, um, but I'm gonna actually put that over there. And then show you guys this. 
because if you open this up, you get a little bit more storage space. And then if you open this up right here, you got your jack and that little thing uh, to fill the vehicle up with fuel if you do run out of gas. Um, so I just wanted to show you guys that. And then you get some brushed aluminum trim back here. It looks very, very nice. And then you get a satin black rear bumper protector back here. Pressing on this button, actually last but not least, you also do get another light right here, but pressing on that button will drop the power lift gate. And then taking a look back here, you guys do get a body color rear bumper again with another six sensors. Then you get a reflector strip that runs across just beneath those sensors back there. And then you do get a gloss black rear balance. You get a dual exit tipped exhaust on the passenger side of the vehicle. That is a look at that a couple more things back here um, is that this particular one does have the optional $2,600 heavy duty trailer tow package which includes that new ELSD for 2023 as well as a class 4 hitch I'll list everything else that comes with that package on screen right now but if you guys were wondering about the max tow capacity of this particular navigator reserve it is 8,300 pounds with four-wheel drive and then last but not least you guys do get a 373 rear axle ratio as well as a spare tire located underneath there let me know what you guys think of the 2023 lincoln navigator in the comment section down below do you guys like the way that this thing looks do you guys prefer the uh, pre-2022 design personally i really like how they tweak the headlight and taillight design i personally think it looks quite a bit better but again that is a subjective opinion let me know what you guys think in the comment section down below but let's move into performance popping open that hood reveals that 3.5 liter twin turbo v6 that makes 440 horsepower and 510 pound feet of torque it is mated to a 10 speed automatic transmission for a zero to 60 time in five and a half seconds if you guys were wondering about fuel economy you can achieve 16 miles per gallon in the city 22 miles per gallon on the highway for 18 miles per gallon combined with four wheel drive those numbers are about right on par with what you get in like a tahoe a uh, yukon or an escalade however you get quite a bit more power i believe you get like like 20 pound feet of torque more and about like 60 no about like yeah about 50 pound feet of torque more here with this engine as opposed to like the escalade or the yukon so i think those uh fuel economy numbers are fair especially considering the kind of power that this engine makes but if you guys have enjoyed this video so far today or taken anything from this video please be sure to give this video a big thumbs up please hit that subscribe button i am now on my journey to 100 thousand subscribers i know that sounds crazy since we just hit 10,000, but now that we've hit 10 we are on the journey to 100,000. so if you guys are enjoying the video please give it a thumbs up hit that subscribe button but let's move into the interior moving on into the interior like i mentioned to you guys earlier on in the video you do get keyless access on all four doors so all you got to do is have your key fob in your pocket walk up to the vehicle put your hand behind the door handle and the vehicle will unlock you guys can also lock the vehicle by uh, running your finger across these four hash marks you can also get into the vehicle by re remembering your key code type in your key code and that will also let you into the vehicle and obviously you have your unlock function on your key fob as well i want to walk you guys through the different functions on the key fob obviously like any other vehicle you your unlock and your lock function and your panic function you also have your remote start function and your power lift gate open and or close function but let's step into the interior and let's see what the navigator is all about this is called sandstone leather it's kind of like a off-white kind of leather more like a brownish whitish leather if i could describe it now at the top of the door panel it is vinyl wrapped with some of that darker vinyl coloring it looks very nice in collaboration with the sandstone leather you get three memory seat adjustment settings you do get the perfect power way seats i'll mention or i'll walk you guys through that uh, here in a second but pressing on that button will turn your seat massager on and then that will bring you into your seat functions on your screen located at the center of the dash and then all these are for your perfect position seats you get your unlock and your lock functions you get some nice wood grain trim power side view mirror controls pressing on that button will power fold in your side view mirrors that will restrict your passenger window privileges you get automatic up and down windows at all four corners you get a nicely padded and a leather wrapped armrest with some accent colored stitching you get a great spot you can set a 
phone. This particular one does have the $6,310 Reserve One package, which gives you guys the 28 speaker Revel Ultima sound system with a subwoofer. And that is what the speaker surround looks like with that system. Then just like any Ford product, you get a ton of storage space at the bottom of the door panel. But working our way on into the interior, you get a brushed aluminum and illuminated Lincoln door sill. This is what your perfect power way seats look like. They're not perfect power way, they're called perfect position seats. I keep getting that messed up, but they are 30 way perfect position seats and they come a part of the $6,310 reserve one package. So what you guys get with that package include uh, ambient interior LED lighting, the 30 way perfect position seats. You get the illuminated Lincoln star on the exterior. You get also the 28 speaker Revel Ultima sound system. And then also with that package, the side view or the front passenger also gets three memory seat adjustment settings as well. All right, stepping on into the interior, let's take a look at what the navigator has to offer. So like I mentioned, you do get keyless access. So all you gotta do is have your key fob in your pocket, push your foot down on the brake and push to start and that is what it sounds like when it fires up I might have some music start playing um, so just keep that in mind <laughs> that is what it looks like it says navigator when it starts up we'll start over here work our way to the passenger side and then into those rear seats all right starting over here pressing on that button will power open and or close your power lift gate that is to turn your fog lights on or off here are your headlight controls. You got the off all the way down, daytime running lights on, headlights automatic, and then all the way up is headlights always on. This button is to dim your gauge cluster and your backlit buttons. That is to brighten your gauge cluster and your backlit buttons. This rocker switch is to push these pedals away from you, and you can also bring the pedals towards you as well. You get a power tilting and telescoping steering wheel. You get a nicely leather wrapped Opu handle for your driver and for your front passenger over there as well. But taking a look at the steering wheel. This is what the steering wheel looks like. Over here, you have your turn signal control stock. Let's take a listen to the turn signal. That is what the turn signal sounds like. And then that is a look again at the steering wheel. It is leather wrapped as well as heated. And then you get your paddle shifters mounted on the steering wheel as well. Let's take a listen to the horn. That is what the horn sounds like on the 2023 Navigator. Right here is for your Active Glide system. Active Glide is hands-free driving, so basically it will monitor the driver just to make sure that while the vehicle is driving itself, that you are still paying attention to the road. But that is to go back on a track. That is to go forward on a track. This is to volume up. This is to volume down. And then over here, these buttons are to control your 12 inch digital gauge cluster, but we'll get into that in a second. Here are your adaptive cruise control settings. And then down here, you have these different buttons again to control that screen. That is your windshield wiper control stock. Now let's go throughout our gauge cluster, shall we? So on the left-hand side of the gauge cluster, you have your RPM gauge. On the right-hand side of the gauge cluster, you have your speedometer. Up top here, that is the music that's playing. That is the compass. Right now we're facing west. And then that is the ambient exterior temperature. That is the fuel range. So we get 156 miles until empty. That is your fuel gauge. That is your coolant temperature gauge. That is the odometer that lets us know what drive mode we're in. And then that is for like your um, like active glide system as well as your adaptive cruise control transmission status down here. And then that lets us know that the auto stop start system is off and then that the lane keeping system is on. And then that also is letting me know that my headlights are on at the moment. Again, to control this, this screen you got to go down here so if I wanted to go into like my phone stuff I could press on that button right there and then that would bring me into my phone screen again you got this back button right here click it on the back button will bring you back into this screen that will speak to the vehicle so basically you can tell the vehicle to do something I'm not gonna do that right now I'm gonna cancel that but this also comes standard or the reserve also comes standard with a head-up display system so your head-up display is located up top here i'm not sure how well you guys are going to be able to see it but basically all the way to the left is the fuel range that lets us know that we're in park at the center that's the digital speedometer readout and then i have my ambient exterior temperature and the current time i can go and press this head-up display button down here and then that will bring me into this screen so it's letting me know that the head-up display is on i can turn the head-up display off if i wanted to clicking down one will bring 
bring me into my head-up display menu. I can either adjust the brightness, I can adjust the vertical position as well as the rotation. So you can move it like this, you can move it like that, and then you can move it up and down. Going back, you can also adjust the content of which that you see up there as well. So you can see what you can put on there. If that is what you wanted to do, we'll go back all the way back out of that. Then you can bring your, your music located at the center of that screen as well. You can go between your different sources, etc. This is to bring you into your setting screen so you can go into the display setup, the oil life, neutral tell. Let's go into display setup. That is what you can adjust on that. And then that will bring you into your navigation stuff on that screen as well. So basically, boom, pressing the navigation button. That is what comes up on screen. I could spend a lot of time on this screen, but I'm not gonna spend all that time because you know you guys are here to see a review of the whole vehicle, not just of that screen. Coming over here, you get your push button, start button. It's basically like located up top here. So instead of like it being right there, it's like up top. Then you get some wood grain trim there and then that flows all the way throughout the dash it looks very very premium and then you also get some piano black accent trim beneath it this is for your integrated trailer brake controller i believe the trailer brake controller comes a part of the 2600 dollars heavy duty trailer tow package so that is where that is located and then this is your trailer brake controller um i don't did i say that this was the trailer brake controller i meant that this is um like your pro trailer backup system so basically if you twist that to the left twist that to the right the vehicle will uh, steer the vehicle for you when you're backing up to a trailer or backing up with your trailer to a boat ramp let's say uh, but Let's move into our infotainment system. So the reserve comes standard with this 13.2 inch SYNC 4 infotainment system with wireless Apple CarPlay and wireless Android auto connectivity. One thing that I really like about, you know, Ford products and just the SYNC system as a whole is that it's very intuitive. It's very easy to use. And then this was an over the year update like a month or so ago. Now you get full screen Apple CarPlay by the push of that button. Now the entire screen is Apple CarPlay. If I click that button right Right there again that will bring me back into just uh, what Apple CarPlay used to be on the sync system but I'm gonna bring you guys down to this shortcut menu down here um, so you get your audio stuff your Apple CarPlay navigation favorites apps settings and features so these are all your different shortcut buttons this is what the audio system or the audio uh, sources look like go into the, your Apple CarPlay stuff and go into your navigation stuff this is your favorites so this is one favorite screen that is your second favorite screen. Then you can go between your different apps, which is basically like Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. Go in between your different settings. This is one settings screen. Swipe over. This is your second settings screen. This is your third settings screen. And like I mentioned to you guys over here, if I click on this button, that will bring me into my seat stuff on the screen. So you can either adjust the seat right here. You can adjust the lumbar stuff all throughout there and then you can also go uh, into the massage so now pressing on massage now I'm getting a nice massage on my back and honestly like on a lot of vehicles you know they might have like a seat massager but it's really not all that good but this one is actually very very good um, really that's kind of about it I guess you can go in between your different settings and stuff but I'm not gonna do that you can also go in between your different features right here I'll show you guys the different driver assistance features um, so this is one driver assistance feature screen this is another one and then that is one more you get a ton of different uh, safety features and then on this side of the screen you have uh, like your uh, audio stuff I can swipe that up by clicking right there actually that will bring me in my navigation screen my phone screen trip one screen fuel economy stuff and or my climate one thing that's uh, kind of interesting is that you do not get a physical button to turn your heated steering wheel on uh, you actually have to click right there and that will turn the heated steering wheel on um, so that's you know kind of a complaint uh, but it's really not that big of a deal working our way down just a touch got your HVAC vents that is your instant camera button so that will pop up my forward facing camera and my 360 degree view camera system when I put this thing into reverse that will pop up my backup camera with guidance lines one thing that's interesting though about these different transmission buttons is that the moving gears are textured the stationary gears are smooth so see that textured textured smooth and smooth coming down just a tad 
this is your climate control stack. Another little minor complaint uh, is that to turn your HVAC system off, you actually have to press this menu button right here that will bring you into this screen and then that will turn the system all the way off. So no, you cannot twist this all the way to the left because that just leaves you on fan speed one. It doesn't go any lower than that. You have to actually go throughout the screen in order to turn the HVAC system off. This is a tri-zone climate control vehicle. However, you can go into here and you can turn your heated seats on or off. Both have uh, heated and ventilated seats have three levels of adjustability and they are also auto. So you can have your auto uh, seats on or off. So when it's you know cold, it will turn the heated seats on for you automatically. And then when it's really hot, it will turn the ventilated seats on automatically for you, which I think is pretty cool. And then opening this up, you get a USB-A port, you get a USB-C port, you get a wireless charging pad as standard, as well as a 12 volt power outlet. And then you get a little bit of a ambient light down in there as well. One uh, little space like right here is a little storage space and it fits your key fob perfectly by the way um, and then you also do get two cup holders right now this is my yeti coffee cup fits there perfectly i also have my brita water bottle both fit there perfectly if you want to close all this stuff off you can close your cup holders just like i just closed that just to give it a cleaner look electronic parking brake your drive mode selector you have a, uh, i think seven different drive modes so you got your excite conserve normal normal 4x4 auto slippery deep conditions, and then slow climb. So that's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. So I was right, you do have seven different drive modes. And then that is to turn your auto stop start system on or off. That is like your active park assist. However, uh, this one does have a credit for active park assist 2.0 removal. Thank, uh, you can thank the sh chip shortages for that. But when you press on that button, basically all you can do in here is that it will either find you a parking lot uh, through the navigation system or you can turn your front side and rear parking sensors off or on by the push of that button up top there last but not least you have your auto hold button well basically uh, if you're stuck in traffic you're tired of holding your foot down on your brake by yourself if you press this button right here and it says that it is on the vehicle will hold you in place with its braking system by itself that is a really really cool thing and then you guys one thing that's pretty cool about lincoln's is that you get two individual um centerfold or armrests here so it's not just like one piece it's two individual pieces it's leather wrapped it's nicely padded you get some accent colored stitching opening this up you get a spot you can set a phone and then right down in there i'm not sure how well the gopro is going to pick it up but you also do get a 12 volt power outlet you get this divider right here you can set a phone or any something like a phone size down in there and then also down in here my whole forearm and more fits down in there so there is a ton of storage base down in your center fold down armrest so tons of storage space uh storage space is basically the theme of the expedition and the navigator but you also do get a locking glove box with you know a decent amount of storage space down in there not the biggest uh, but you can definitely fit what you need to down in there. I mean, considering the size of the vehicle, it might not be the biggest, but considering the size of the glove box, there is quite a bit of storage base down in there. Piano black trim, you get some chrome trim, you get some leather wrapping up top here. The passenger door looks very similar to what you would find in the front with all those controls, um, basically the same thing uh, as the driver. However, you also do get an Opu panel up top here that is leather wrapped, whereas you do not get one of those on this side auto dimming rear view mirror then you have all these controls you got your driver light you got your passenger light you got your dome light button right there so all the interior dome lights will turn on by the push of that that will turn off all the interior dome lights pressing on that button right there now when i open up the door the interior lights will not turn on if i press that button again now when i open up the interior door all the interior lights will turn on you get a panoramic roof as standard with the reserve so these are your uh actual like the glass sliding controls as well as the glass tilt control right there and then these buttons are to control the panoramic shade so if i press that the shade will open up but it's kind of hot outside so pressing on that button that will close the shade again if i press this button right here i believe that will fold the third row headrests down so i'm going to press this button take a look Basically, if your kids are annoying you, you can press that button and mess with them just a touch. So uh, 
Also, you get a great spot. You can set your sunglasses up top there. And then just like a Honda Odyssey, you get this little um, mirror right here. It's basically like a fisheye mirror. You can see all your passengers with that mirror right there. Universal garage door opener. If your house has three different garage bays, you can open up those three different garage bays individually. Opening up your visor, you got a little clip right here. You can set money, registration, or any small paper product. You get a vanity mirror with two vanity lights. And then this visor also does slide forwards and backwards very very nice when the sun is in those annoying positions but basically this visor is big enough you don't really even have to slide it but if you do the option to do that is there um, that's a uh, speaker for your revel ultima sound system you get another one on that side as well a couple things i wanted to go over before we get into those rear seats include that with the 6310 dollars reserve one package you guys get ambient interior led lighting you get the 30-way perfect position seats with memory uh, memory also is included on the front passenger seat as well uh, as well as the illuminated lincoln star on the exterior and the 28 speed Revel Ultima sound system. A couple standard features that I thought were pretty cool include the Active Glide hands-free driving system. I tested it out, uh, was a little like sketched out uh, on using it because I don't really use hands-free driving in vehicles. I like to drive myself personally. Um, you also get the pano roof as standard. You get the three zone climate control system, 360 degree view camera system, head up display, adaptive cruise control, speed sign recognition, and the wireless charging pad. A couple safety features I thought I might highlight for you guys um, these are not all of them but these are a few uh, pre-collision assist with automatic em emergency braking that includes pedestrian detection intersection assist forward collision warning dynamic braking support as well as post collision braking um, now I'm gonna pull up the window sticker on screen for you guys to take a look at so you can take a look at all the standard stuff all the optional stuff and uh, the fuel economy the government safety ratings and stuff like that but basically I'm just gonna highlight the MSR so the MSRP that the way this particular 2023 Lincoln Navigator Reserve 4x4 is spec'd is $106,765. Let me know what you guys think of that price in the comment section down below. I know that is pretty darn expensive, um, but if you guys take a look at Cadillac Escalade prices, right on par with each other. So I do wanna show you guys what these rear seats look like before we move into the driving portion of the review. So opening this rear door up, this is what the rear door looks like. You get your Ultima sound system speaker surrounds up and on the bottom. You get some wood trim, nicely padded and leather wrapped armrest, automatic up and down windows in the back here, um, as well as the spot. You could set your key fob back here if you wanted to as well. Great spot, you can set a phone and then uh, a little bit of miscellaneous storage base down there. This is what your second row seats look like. You get the center fold down armrest. Very, very nice. Now let's step into these second row seats. I am adjusted behind myself. You may be able to tell I've got plenty of leg room. I've got plenty of knee room, uh, as well as I have a ton of headroom as well. One thing that's nice, these seats will recline. So now look at all that reclinability. I'm very, very comfortable. I could definitely see myself doing a long road trip in the back of the Lincoln back here. But you get a seat back pocket behind the driver's seat. You also get a seat back pocket behind the passenger seat. One thing that's pretty cool about Lincoln's, the Aviator has this as well, is that you can go in between your different seat functions. So you get heated and ventilated second row seats, both with three levels of adjustability, tri-zone climate control. That is what your climate control system looks like back here. You can adjust the fan speed, the temperature, the direction of which the air is pointing. You can also go into your audio stuff. You can see what is playing. You can play or pause. You can also volume up you can volume down and then you can switch between your different sources am fm xm and bluetooth audio um, back into this you can go in between your different settings so you can turn the display off you can adjust the brightness you can go into your calm screen uh, you can go into your different modes whether it be day night or auto you can go into your auto dimming which right now the auto dimming feature is on um, and really that's kind of about it for that screen aside from you have your time right there coming down just a tad Opening this up, you get a USB-C port as well as a USB-A port. You get a 12 volt power outlet and a 150 watt household power outlet all the way to the right. And then pushing on that button right there, you get two more cup holders down here. Like I mentioned, you get the center fold down armrest and you can adjust it pretty much exactly as you want it to. It'll stay in place. Want it down, you can bring it down, bring it up, you can do that as well. There's a little bit of resistance, so basically it will stay in its position, but 
Revel Ultima sound system speaker right up top there. You get another leather wrapped and padded Opu panel. You got your dome lights. You got a spot you can set your dry cleaning and an HVAC vent. Same stuff over there on the passenger side as well. I do want to show you guys what these third row seats look like. I am uh, adjusted behind myself. Like I mentioned, I did recline this seat just a tad. Um, so anyway, I guess I'm gonna have to deal with it, but you can see with the seat reclined, it is touching my knees. However, if I push that seat or slid that seat forward a little bit and reclined it back into its position normally, uh, I would still be comfortable back here in these third row seats. Third row seats sit up a little bit higher than the second row seats, but if I press on this button right here, that will, um, you can see what's moving. And then I can also recline it as well, all electrically. Pretty cool, these controls do that right here two cup holders, uh, USB-A port, a good amount of storage space, and then you get a little more storage space back down in there. And then on this side, you can do the same thing. You can fold the seats up, you can fold the seats down, you get a USB-A port, a 12 volt power outlet, good amount of storage space, and then only one cup holder on this side. But another spot, you can set your dry cleaning back here on that side, you get the same thing over here on the um, driver's side as well. You get your dome light, two HVAC vents, one on that side, one on this side. But you know, we have talked about the exterior, we talked about the performance, and now we've talked about what's going on here in the interior of the Navigator Reserve. So I wanna see what this thing's like to drive as I'm assuming you guys do as well. So I'll see you guys in the driver's seat. All right guys, and now on to the driving portion of the review where this thing rides so, so well. Now, one of the first things I wanted to mention on this part of the video um, is basically a comparison from like the Yukon Denali Ultimate to this riding wise. So. Uh, first things first is that I wanted to say that this thing rides so, so comfortably. It goes over bumps literally so, so well. Like going over bumps in this, you can rarely, barely even feel them. Now, this is where I wanted to compare the Denali Ultimate to this is that the Denali Ultimate definitely handles better around turns and stuff like that. It remains super flat um, and just it's just a better handler. However, that one has a more firm suspension. So going over bumps, you can definitely feel the bumps more in that as compared to this. Whereas this thing just soaks up bumps so, so well. Um, and I can tell you if I was to drive, you know, that or this on a road trip, you know, from here where I'm at in Virginia down to Miami, you know, honestly, I'd be comfortable in both of them. You know, they both ride very, very well. However, this one just edges out that uh, just a little bit more because it just, it's a more comfortable ride. I mean, it really is. Um, so the handling is better on the Yukon. However, the comfortability wise of the suspension is more comfortable on this. And then also um, this has a quite a bit more power than the Denali Ultimate and on the Escalade as well. Now, if you know, you're just a person, you want a V8, well, then you're probably gonna wanna get the Escalade or the Yukon Denali Ultimate. Reason being is you can't even get a v8 on the lincoln however the reality is you don't need a v8 in one of these you know like just look at the power this is not even me flooring it and it just accelerates exceptionally well i mean the power on this i mean it's more than you would ever need in a vehicle like this but you know if you're buying a vehicle that's you know this is pretty expensive you know it's pretty much uh, a little bit more expensive than the Denali Ultimate. However, you know, you get quite a bit more power. The seats are definitely more comfortable in this. The seat massagers are also better than in this than in the Denali Ultimate. Now, I haven't driven a new 2023 Escalade, so I can't compare this directly to an Escalade. So if that is what you're looking for, I have not driven you know, the new Escalade. Um, I know looks are subjective between this and the Escalade, but I do kind of prefer the way that the Escalade looks on the exterior just a touch bit more. However, this is definitely, uh, I think it's gonna be even more comfortable than the Escalade. You know, GM, they do a good job with looks, they do a good job with their suspensions and their sound systems, but when it comes to seat comfort, they just they need a little bit of help because GM seats are just a little bit a little bit too firm but that is where the Lincoln comes in because these seats are so 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 comfortable and the massagers actually work you can feel it and I actually feel like I'm getting massage not just like it's like touching my back whereas I find that to be um, 
that's what I find in a lot of vehicles is that they have seat massagers, but they're really not massaging you. They're more just like touching your back, which this is actually like massaging you. The seats are super, super comfortable and you can find literally your perfect position with these seats. It's almost like there's too much adjustability with these seats, but really there's not because once you find your perfect position, you are literally in your perfect position. Now, another thing is I'm going to give you guys a little bit of time to hear what this thing sounds like at about 40 miles an hour uh, wind noise and road noise wise. So you can see this thing is very, very, very well insulated from the outside world. And I mean, that's kind of what you would expect out of a vehicle like this. And it definitely delivers because it is very, very quiet. So you do get active glide, which is the hands-free driving. But if you don't want to use that, you also do have adaptive cruise control where you can steer, um, you know, but if you don't feel like steering and you want something that's hands-free, this does have hands-free driving. It's just a matter of whether you want to use it or not. Um, so again, that that's something and that's also personal preference. One thing I wanted to mention also is the sound system. Now, I did test the same sound system uh, a couple months ago, maybe, maybe like a month ago in the, um, the Navigator Black Label. And for some reason, I know this is the same exact sound system. That was a Navigator L. This is just the Navigator short wheelbase. Um, this sounds really, really good. I do, however, wish it was just a little bit louder, but the bass is great, the clarity is great, and just the sound system sounds really, really good. Now, I have given Revel um, sound systems a little bit of crud in the past uh, because comparing them to the Bose, the Bose you can definitely go louder with, um, but really, Sound-wise, for sound quality-wise, I got to say that the Ultima sound system has definitely great sound quality. The bass is definitely there. Um, it's just I do wish I could crank this up just a little bit more. But the speaker surrounds look super, super premium and elegant. Um, and just overall, this is a very, very nice vehicle to drive. It's very easy to drive. It's very easy to steer around a parking lot because the steering is very light. You got your 360-degree view camera system. You have your front, side, and rear sensors. So basically, if you back into something or you how somehow, you know, hit something in a parking lot, that is a problem with you because this thing definitely helps you out with parking as well as with driving. So overall, it is a very, very nice vehicle to drive. Um, and it's just super, super comfortable. So if you guys are interested in this particular one, I'll be sure to have Jennifer's information in the description box down below. But that's it for today's video. If you guys did enjoy the video or take anything from this video, please be sure to give this video a big thumbs up. Please hit that subscribe button. Like I mentioned to you guys earlier on in the video, I am now on my journey to 100,000 subscribers, and I would greatly appreciate it if you guys were one of those 100,000 subscribers. So again, if you guys did enjoy the video, please be sure to give it a thumbs up hit that subscribe button but again that's it for today's video i will catch you guys in the next one peace